what's going on everybody welcome back to another video i've been gone for a while you know been struggling with some things um i don't know and i just got a new computer so i'm able to edit freely but i don't have to wait for him all the time so yeah, I'll be doing i know more. i stay on that thing i'll be doing way more videos and stuff I think I do the thing. This is my I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her and mom. I'm proud of her developing this channel. And yeah, so we, we just stepped our lap, laptop game up. She just stepped her laptop game up. So y'all could be expecting more of her because y'all know I, 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 I'm on the computer too much for us to be, for us to be sharing that thing. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't be doing my videos because it takes a while. I feel like I look bald. This is going to be... um. This I'm going in the direction of like an interview, but I kind of just want to have like... We're doing it. We're supposed to be doing a mukbang, but anyways, we're supposed to. We're doing a mukbang, kind of. We're waiting for our food to get done and stuff. But I think we're just gonna have the discussions how we have discussions. I guess we are going to be going a conspiracy route because I feel like he has gained a lot of new followers who haven't really got to experience the real spiritual, non-physical side of young girl yes so i wanted to talk to him about certain stuff and with his opinion on certain stuff and we just kind of piggy off each other okay so i wrote some questions hold on where we going right home <laughs> she ready to go she prepared first question what is your belief system a lot of people think because you don't believe in that version of god they think that you are assume people who are conscious are either atheist, atheist, say atheist or the we devil worship yeah so what would you consider your your spiritual system well people that are spiritual is just people that's in tune with the electromagnetic spiral of the universe and um my spiritual system is just you know what i tattooed on my hands Fibonacci sequence, uh, 1.618, which is the mathematical uh, principle ratio of all physical things in existence. And I know that God is just one universal consciousness that's omnipresent. And it's what we, it's what we call the mind. And the mind exists throughout all galaxies, all, all things in the universe, and you connect to the mind through your brain and you interpret the mind through your state of psychology and you express your mind through your straight of through your state of you know uh genetics and by definition i like to say god is the highest extent of the mind which uses elements and matter to express itself so god is like the internet the mind is like the internet and our brains are like individual computers there's only one internet but it's however many computers we can create and our like let, let's use social media Let's use social media for an example. It's 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 millions of Facebook profiles. It's only one Facebook. So we wouldn't ask people, do you believe in a different Facebook than me? Because you express yourself differently on Facebook. Your profile is based upon your 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 personal state of psychology. So when it comes to God, we all believe in different gods because we've been lied to about what God really is, which is this this mind. And you know, if we really tap into our minds and understand that our minds control our physical reality then we can you know go further in our evolution as humans we can tap into uh amino acids that are dormant in our dna and unlock different you know human characteristics that can advance us as human beings we can uh detach ourselves from certain uh neurological signals in our nervous system that will allow us to let's say quote unquote not feel pain or things like you know what buddhist monks do there's there's levels of human achievement that we could possess that we actually start to study the power of our minds and how to utilize that to use elements and matter to express ourselves in the way we want to so i believe in universal consciousness you know that don't mean i believe that we're all the same we're not you know what i'm saying people people we're not all one race you know let's <laughs> let's get that on the wax mm -hmm. and that's not about racism but it's about you know we wouldn't call a, a dog a bird and then tell animals to love each other because they're all one race animals are peaceful you know and more peaceful than humans because animals acknowledge that they're not all one race but they're connected through god which is the mind humans lie to themselves and we tell ourselves that we are all one race 
but we're connected through this fictional guy that is a, a imaginary friend for grown people that was given to us by colonizers and we, we weren't just physically colonized we were spiritually colonized so you know it's time for us to reverse you know that that colonial process and go back to the, our original trains of thought okay so would you think for me you know how people believe in different gods right right so do you feel like spiritually you can create an entity based off a lot of people believe in certain things like people believe in jesus some people believe in even though we know jesus and stuff isn't a real figure but since so many people started believing do you think that that could be manifested in the spiritual realm yes and no so yes and no and the reason i say that is because you can create things in your individual mind but that don't mean it's it's a universal truth like for example if i believe in the buggy man the boogeyman can become real to me, and this becomes a form of artificial reality, but that doesn't mean it's actually real in reality. So, you know, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, our reality right now is real. Like, you know, technically atoms don't touch each other, so there is no such thing as physical contact. It's just, you know, electrical signals that's letting you know, you know, that your, you know, electrons are too close to other electrons. So this reality is not even real. So, you know, understanding our minds, like if you have a dream about like Freddy Cougar or something, that doesn't mean Freddy Cougar is real. He's just real to you. And like you said, we we have the power etherically to actually create um what we put our energy into. And so you know this is the science of ether and things like that. And you know the ether is just potential energy, and that energy is created through the current the current the constant interaction of quarks and you know height and uh, what you call it quarks and things that exist within you know the neutrons and atoms and our mind our, you know our, our brains can connect to these electromagnetic fields and manipulate them according to our thoughts so if somebody say you know santa claus or jesus like she said if everybody believes in that then we can create that false reality so it won't be real according to universal not physically standard. not physically it wouldn't be real but yeah yeah like esoterically yeah yeah it'd be real to us but, well like in a spiritual sense, could that entity be created um, spiritually? Like, yeah, like could we create a spiritual being? Yeah, I want to say yes and no. Just and like, like I, just like how you know the gods of Egypt and stuff like that. Though they, it was physical. Um, like forms. yeah, they was like spiritual principles, right? Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, and, and that's that's kind of like what they're doing. Even with Jesus, but people just got to realize that an extraterrestrial was attached to Jesus. So, you know, that goes a little more deeper than people might want to conversate about right now. But you can you can conjure up and create what you think. And, 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 it, and it'll affect you either positively or negatively. So we can definitely create, uh, I, I want to say, frequencies, you know, that and bring them into existence. And this is why our thoughts, like, for example, you don't know if your thoughts are creating a planet. You know what I'm saying? You don't know if your thoughts are. That's why. Or your yeah. Like the new Earth, they have like people like kind of talk about like the new Earth. You know. Right. Have you ever heard of that? Yes. Yeah, like that kind of. Exactly. So yeah, like we our thoughts even manifest our environment. Would you say we came here first? The aliens came and re-engineered us, or would you say that aliens planted us? And that's how we came about. I would say that we are the, alien? the extraterrestrials. And and we a form. We are, we forgot who we are. It's like I feel like there is there is just like how, how blacks in America we don't really look like Africans, but we share DNA. We just got certain sequences that's a little different. So I feel like our ancestors look like us. But not all the way like us. So I feel like in a more we evolved state. Evolved, I would say. Well, in a more maybe universal form. Right, right, right. And then some of them don't even have physical form. Yeah. So I feel like it's kind of like we we dropped ourselves off and forgot. You know what I'm saying? Like black culture all around the world has one consistent story, and that's that. And that's that. Whether we go to the Dogons and Mali, Egyptians, the uh black indians from america you know the, the the black nagas in japan india before any other race of people was on the planet black people's universal story was 
our ancestors came from the stars and that they seeded the four corners of the planet Earth. And that was universal. And the reason that that's important is because if you study cultures and you literally go to the four corners of the Earth, people that have literally never met each other say the same exact thing. So, you know, you can't have consecutive stories of, of, of different civilizations that never even crossed paths at the time of the story being told and they be perfectly consistent. And that you said this not in physical form and made me jog it jogged my mind like a certain like movies and like you know, just people's experience what they say. Right. Why they can't really capture aliens on camera. Because right. they're just it's like really just It's outside the frequency. Yeah. Um, so another question that came. I didn't want this to be like an interview, but I am here to be one of you in my sense. Do you believe that there is different species of like not humans but like like different planets have not just the ones in our solar system but like other universes and stuff do you think like there is a versions of not versions of us like I use the word humanoids something that's kind of like a human but it's not like say what I'm thinking of is really like say like on Marvel how they have like or like Guardians of the Galaxy yeah all that's real how they have like different like green people blue people and yes and all that other stuff you believe that no I know that to be a fact we would be green if we switch the iron in our blood with magnesium we would have chlorophyll and we would turn green like a plant and that's why our ancestors paint some of our people as green and the reason I'm bringing that up to y'all is to, so that you know the color that you are is only the level of frequency that your body rejects. And so the reason that black people are black is because we absorb all light and all light, you know, together. When you take the rainbow and you condense it, it becomes black. So actually, in order to be a light being, you have to be dark. The darker you are, the closer you are to light. So uh, the reason I bring that up is because I have no doubt in my mind that there's intelligent life on other planets that have, you know, genetic makeups to where their skin doesn't absorb the entire rainbow you know what i'm saying it's like for example white people are white because they don't absorb the entire electromagnetic spectrum we are black because we do so it got to be somebody in between it got to be somebody that absorbed maybe 70 percent of it so 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 like you might absorb blue green and red but you don't ab absorb you know purple and yellow so you might be purple and yellow you know what i'm saying because the, 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 the we know from colorology the colors that we see is the colors that the object is not absorbing. That's the only reason we see it. So, and some people have like green spots on them. Right, right, right. So this is not like far fetched. And I want people to remember is, you know, uh, Lockheed Skunk Works. I can't get his name right now, but they already admitted that everything that we see on TV, they literally said from Star Trek to Star Wars, if we've seen it. They've already did it or they didn't feel like wasting their time because they knew they could do it. So people got to realize TV is meant to desensitize us for the next phase of life that the government has been slowly but surely trying to usher in. Like, for example, if you watch any movie that your parents watched when they was kids, the technology that we got now was in the movie. So before our parents had cell phones, the exact cell phones we got was in the movies. You know what I'm saying? Before they had computers like we got flat screens and things like that. That was in their movies, and that's normal to us now. So now what's in our movies is what they prepping, you know, the, the next generation to be ready for and be desensitized. So when you see it, it's not like, ooh, like like when cell phones finally came out, the it was like, oh my God, it was like, nah, we seen that in the movie and now it's here. They just predate, yeah, they just introduce it. And so even though this is extra, I want to say this. The technology we get is always 300 years behind what they really got. So they give you... Uh, a cell phone that you best believe they got them holographic devices devices just like we see on Star Wars where you can talk to somebody through a hologram and all of that so you know we get the hand-me-downs and we think it's new but it's really stuff that the government been been bored with why do you think that we came to this planet I know to have a human experience um, I believe that... And do you believe that this planet is a prison? Well, even though it is, well, in a sense. Not... Um, I don't know. I'm like in between, in a sense. 
Yeah, and I feel you on that. I know physically it is. I believe we came to this planet because at one point in time, it possessed a very beautiful experience for our souls to evolve. And I feel like now we come into this planet to liberate this thing. That's why, you know, people come in turn and people come in, in warrior mode. So I feel like the, 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 the inventory of souls that are reincarnating here now are coming for straight liberation. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't feel like people are coming here now to have an experience because what experience you going to have? This is the matrix. You know what I'm saying? Everything is, is, is controlled. So, so some souls come in here to raise the vibration of this planet. Right. Right. So at this point in time, I mean, it's still a learning experience. Like you can still come here now and learn how to develop courage. You can learn how yeah. to develop discipline. You can learn. It's still a learning experience nonetheless. But I just want people to realize that this ain't the world we once was in. Like this is not it. You know what I'm saying? The Our treat. learning experience has been hijacked. Right. 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 There you go. There you go. Mm. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Let me know. Let me talk to you. Don't look at me like that movie. Don't even talk to her. Anyways. <laughs> She's gonna come over here. But, um... Next question. Do you believe in ghosts and what are some paranormal experiences you have had? Alright, y'all. I got <laughs> I know ghosts exist. I don't, I don't know if we should keep using the word ghost, but you know we'll say ghost. Yeah. Yeah, a ghost is just, to me the ghost, the word ghost should be synonymous with pedestrian and human should be synonymous with driver. When your soul is in your vessel, your body, you're a driver. When it's out, you're a pedestrian or aka a ghost. When you're in your car, you're a driver. When you're out, you're a pedestrian. So, you know, we all lead this vessel and some of us become stuck in this world, you know. Hopefully y'all don't because I'm not, but um, I'm a, let me get a good, a good, a good story. Okay, boom. In this very, very house that I live in. Right? In this very house. Um, I was asleep. And I was trapped outside my body. And I couldn't come back in my body. It was like I astral projected out, but I couldn't come back in. And it was this figure that was like blocking me from re-entering my body. And my son's mother was... uh with me at the time and it was a it was like a it was like a being helped me get back in my body by banging on the door and it was like three four in the morning and my son's mom was like hey your parole officer at the door but my parole officer don't even bang when, when they come but she's like your parole officer is at the door and I was just stuck I couldn't even respond because I wasn't in my body like I could see everything but I couldn't get in my body and it was this figure it was like either I don't know if it was black or gray, but it was like in between them, them colors, and it was stopping me from getting in my body. The only the way, the best way I could step, the best way I could describe it, is like a, an electrified shadow. That's the best description I can give you. It was like an electrified shadow, like a, like like if your shadow could pulsate electricity, and it was stopping me from getting in my body. And the the the, the you know whatever it was, it was a ghost, an extraterrestrial, or whatever, it was literally banging on the door, and as it was banging, I felt myself like, you know, coming back into my physical reality. It was like trying to wake me up out of, out of my astral state because I wasn't dreaming. I, I know I wasn't dreaming because I could remember everything that happened to the teeth. And my son's mom will confirm the story. And boom, she she like, you know, basically like, why am I ignoring her? But I'm, I'm paralyzed. I can't move. I can't even respond. And she got up and she went to the door. And I'm talking about she is banging, it's banging on her door as she's walking to the door. And soon as she got to the door, when she opened it, it was nobody at the door, and I came back in my body. That's a true story. Okay, well, I have a story in this house too. One time, it was I was fully awake, so it wasn't like a. Well, I have one of those two actually, but anyways. I was, I was, it was like middle of the night, I don't know what woke me up, but as soon as I opened my eyes, it was like a woman floating above me, in like a flowy white dress, just kind of floating above me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just caught my lip though, it made a little noise too much. Y'all 
y'all can't hear it, but it made a little noise. <laughs> but anyways, it was just a woman floating above me, and I screamed so loud. Like, I, like if it was this silent, I would have got my tongue cut off. And Pharrell was laying right next to me, and he didn't even hear me scream or anything. I was like... And then she just disappeared and like just went away. It didn't feel it didn't feel like scarier. Well, I got scared because I'm just waking up and seeing a fucking big ass figure in my face. And I and I I know I wasn't tripping, so it wasn't like I'm tripping or because I'm just waking up. It was I seen her clear as day. I can't say say her face, but she was like she was just like flowing, like all white on. Um. I want to say she has long hair. Um, I don't know, but I screamed. You didn't even wake up. I'm over here shaking him. He didn't even wake up. I was so terrified to a certain extent, but it didn't feel evil or anything like that. So I wasn't that that scared. Yeah, yeah. It was that was crazy. I think it was that all the time actually. That's crazy because you just reminded me of another experience I had in here, but I'm gonna say it because we think that'll be a good story for another video. Why? You want me to tell that? Yeah. Boom, so I was asleep. I was asleep, and it was this woman. I don't know if y'all know about these two incubuses and succubuses. And matter of fact, I did a video on my YouTube channel about this. Yeah, I was gonna say. I did a video on my YouTube channel about this from, um, from like years ago. So if y'all can find that old video, I think it's called Astral Projection or something. Or something like that. I told this story, but it was a woman, basically. She came, and she, and she like, sat on my chest and was trying to, like, suck my life force out or something. And this this man. He's like a... He rocked. He be like, he's taller than her, she's shorter. And they like, you know, everybody describes these people the same all around the world. They look the same and it's the same description of these people. Um, you know, just 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 universally. You know, even people we, like we've never met that's had this experience. And I've had that experience here. And um long story short, that's another, you know, that's another ghost story for y'all if you want to call I, it. That. I thought you said something about a guy too. Right. That stuck with me when you told that story. That stuck with me. Like, and I just, I just think about that. I just think so scared. Yeah. Like, I'm never that. That's what I'm trying to. I ain't trying. I ain't trying to reconjure it up. Um, okay. Well, I had a similar astral projection kind of dream. I was um, I think it was like right before we were getting our new bed. He slept downstairs on the couch, um, and I had a dream about these three witches in our house. And I was like fighting them and stuff like that. I don't know what we was fighting for, but they was just wrecking shit in, the, in this house. Like, um, and so we was just fighting and stuff. And then they went upstairs because they was trying to rip up my tarot cards. And then I was like fighting them. Then I woke up and then when I went upstairs, three of my tarot cards was actually ripped. That was crazy. And I'm That's like, crazy. What the? Remember? Yeah. It was my, it was my, it's my first ever Oracle deck, actually, it was in hair cards. So that was like really weird to me, and I was just like, whoa. And then I have another story where, well, it's not really my story. I heard through the grapevine, it had something to do with me, but I don't know if this is real or not, but my brother, my brothers and my cousin said it was, so I don't know. I don't know if they was lying to scare me, but my cousin actually just texted me the other day, talking about she remembers um, what I was talking about and stuff. I had this life-size doll and um, it was creepy. It was weird. It was like a life-size doll when I was little. And um, I guess I put it in the um, in my closet and then we like went to sleep in the living room to so just lay down, you know, a little pallet or whatever. And they said like when they turned around, the doll was sitting on the couch. <laughs> That's crazy. The doll was sitting on the couch just blinking at it because it could blink with his eyes. And just blinking at him and stuff like that and it was like scared and we like ripped it apart and all the other extra stuff so that was pretty creepy if, if that's actually really real they say it is but you know people be lying i don't know but <laughs> maybe i got one more for y'all right and it's the last good one i'm gonna give y'all because i like to keep my spiritual experiences to myself um i was i was uh i said ghost stories you don't have to you don't want to go so spiritual you can be physical ghost stories Okay, I got one more for y'all, right? Oh, that's my sugar moon. Here I come, sugar moon. Wait a minute. She said. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to watch that. Okay, so when I was young, I was at my aunt house, right? When I was young, I was a kid. And I never forget, I was blasting 50 Cent in my aunt house. 
And she was like, turn that down, you gonna, you gonna make the spirits mad, they don't wanna hear that. And I was like, I was young too, I had to be like 11, 10, I'm like, spirits? <laughs> oh, whatever, like, I'm, you know, I, that, that meant nothing to me at the time. And I'm, I'm doing me. And I came, I remember I went to come downstairs, and it was this picture of this Indian woman, it's just like always a creepy looking picture. As soon as I got in front of the picture, I like I came up off the ground and fell down. Like some pushed me down the stairs, and it was from that point on, I learned you, you. I learned it's real like that, and you respect the spirits. And like you know what I'm saying, that that that's what let me know, for sure, for sure. And I've always had like experiences, you know, even from when I was a kid. But I, I'm gonna keep a lot of stuff to myself. But that is a ghost experience that validly happened to me.